an arduous and perilous occupation with unique challenges. The duties of a correctional officer are not easy. The difficult job, according to officers, is now compounded by what they say are unresolved long-standing matters at the bodily correctional facility. The patience of correctional officers is reportedly wearing paper thin. On Wednesday, the officers held an emergency meeting at the Denary Infant School to discuss the outstanding grievances. Our members have been asking questions on pending issues and we needed to give them an update on those pending issues. Public Relations Officer of the Correctional Services Welfare Association, Yasmin Peter, says the large turnout at the meeting is indicative of the need for urgent action to address their plight. On a daily basis, you would have sometimes two officers, two female officers running a unit with a hundred and five male inmates and they do not have a radio to communicate. We do not have a radio, a proper radio network to communicate in case of emergency. And we, the executive, is, is really concerned about that. We have born patients. We were told that on the 31st of March, we would be getting radios. Today is the 14th of April. We have heard nothing. And the radio could be what could save an officer's life. The time it would take, we also do not have a, a, effect, a fixed line system on those residential units, okay? In the meantime, the department reverted to cell phones, but we all know what happens with cell phones. Most times when you dial, you try to reach somebody because of the broadband and so forth. And all. You, you may have to try on several occasions before you could reach that, that person. And in our environment, a radio is the difference between life and death for a correctional officer. Correctional officers have the unenviable task of securing the lone penal complex, the bodily correctional facility, where hardened convicts, including violent offenders and remand prisoners, call home. As of yesterday at 1 p.m., the president of our association, based on the mandate that our members gave us, delivered a letter to the office of the prime minister. We're still awaiting a response from him as I speak to you, requesting immediate dialogue and a resolution on outstanding issues, okay, which we feel has led to staff being not only fearful for their health and safety at the facility, but the conditions under which they work. The environment is just not conducive to work. We have a problem with one or two officers manning 100 and, 105 inmates. We have a staffing issue. We have vacancies which needs to be filled. We have persons who have gone on retirement and their positions have not been filled. So any issue which pertains to the security and safety of our members, we want it addressed at the soonest, immediately. Mm -hmm. Because and our staff cannot go on any longer working under these conditions. So that's why we wrote to the PM requesting an urgent meeting with him as the Minister of National Security. Peter says health concerns were raised with officers expressing misgivings about an alleged non-functioning sewer treatment plant. They also harbor qualms about eligibility for vehicle concessions. The Welfare Association says in the interest of national security, it is requesting speedy dialogue with administration officials to resolve the laundry list of issues plaguing staff. Solaj Alfred, HCS News Force.